All religions are equally sublime to the ignorant, useful to the politician, and ridiculous to the philosopher. So it is more useful to watch a man in times of peril and in adversity to discern what kind of man he is for then. At last words of truth are drawn from the depths of his heart, and the mask is torn off, reality remains. Air, I should explain, becomes when when it is agitated. To such heights of evil are men driven by religion. Constant dripping hollows out a stone. It's easier to avoid the snares of love than to escape once you are in that net whose cords and knots are strong, but even so, enmeshed and tangled, you can still get out unless, poor fool, you stand in your own way. There can be no center in infinity. Watch a man in times of adversity to discover what kind of man he is. Forth and at last words of truth are drawn from the depths of his heart and the mask is torn off. Man's greatest wealth is to live on a little with contented mind, for little is never lacking. Nature repairs one thing from another and allows nothing to be born without the aid of another's death. There is nothing that exists so great or marvelous that over time mankind does not admire it less and less. For fools admire and love those things they see hidden in verses turned all upside down and take for truth what sweetly strokes the ears and comes with sound of phrases fine imbued. All things keep on an everlasting motion. Out of the infinite come the particles speeding above, below, an endless dance. Nothing can dwindle to nothing, as nature restores one thing from Thestif of another, nor does she allow a birth without a corresponding death. Trees don't live in the sky, and clouds don't swim in the salt. Seas and fish don't leap in wheat fields, blood isn't found in wood, nor sap in rocks. By fixed arrangement, all that live and grow submits to limit and restrictions. To fear death, then, is foolish, since death is the final and complete annihilation of personal identity, the ultimate release from anxiety and pain. What once sprung from the earth sinks back into the earth. The vivid force of his mind prevailed, and he fared forth far beyond the flaming ramparts of the heavens and travers, the boundless universe in thought and mind. Thus the sum of things is ever being renewed, and mortals live dependent one upon another some nations increase, others diminish, and in a short space the generations of living creatures are changed and like runners pass on the torch of life. Visible objects therefore do not perish utterly since nature repairs one thing from another and allows nothing to be born without the aid of another's death. Only religion can lead to such evil. Every person tries to flee himself yet despite ourselves. We remain attached to this self which we hate. The atoms in it must be used over and over again. Thus the death of one thing becomes necessary for the birth of another. Furthermore, as the body suffers, the horrors of disease and the pangs of pain, so we see the mind stabbed with anguish, grief and fear. What more natural 
than that it should likewise have a share in death. Life is one long struggle in the dark. Pleasant it is when over a great sea the winds trouble the waters to gaze from shore upon another's tribulation, not because any man's troubles are a delectable joy, but because to perceive from what ills you are free yourself is pleasant. There is not anything which returns to nothing, but all things return dissolved into their elements. If the world is the product of nothing but natural forces and natural law, divine intervention is impossible. For as children tremble and fear, everything in the blind darkness, so we in the light sometimes fear what is known, more to be feared than the things children in the dark hold in terror and imagine will come true. Time by itself does not exist, but from things themselves there results a sense of what has already taken place, what is now going on, and what is to ensue. It must not be claimed that anyone can sense time by itself apart from the movement of things. Matter's basic elements are solid, completely so and that they fly through time invincible, indestructible forever. Therefore it is necessary that neither the rays of the sun nor the shining spears of day should shatter this terror and darkness of the mind, but the aspect and reason of nature. Truths kindle light for truths. So far as it goes a small thing may give analogy of great things and show the tracks of knowledge. In the midst of the fountain of wit, there rises something bitter which stings in the very flowers. This terror then and darkness of mind must be dispelled not by the rays of the sun and glittering shafts of day, but by the aspect and the law of nature, the war whose design, we shall begin with this first principle, nothing is ever gotten out of nothing by divine power. And so, through the blank of void, all things must fall at equal speed, though not of equal weight. The first beginnings of things cannot be distinguished by the eye. If within would hide flame and smoke and as then would consist of things unlike itself, words pass through walls and slip past lock and key and numbing, cold seeps to our very bones. Violence and injury enclose in their net all that do such things and generally return upon him who began. Though you outlive as many generations as you will, nevertheless, eternal death is waiting for you still. Dot, it is no shorter, that eternity that lies in store for the man, who with the setting sun today will rise no more than for the man whose sun has set months, even years before, and in declaring true every theory that does not contravene the evidence of the senses, Epicurus does not blink the fact that the philosopher may arrive at more than one explanation for a given phenomenon in some cases, even at explanations that are mutually exclusive or contradictory. Whenever a thing changes and quits its proper limits, this change is at once the death of that which was before. Continual dropping wears away a stone, 